on 6th September 2017, PMI has made PMI Agile Practice Guide public. This Agile Practice Guide is in a collaborative effort between PMI and Agile Alliance. And this guide helps us in visualizing how Agile and predictive life cycle sometimes need to coexist and how a project manager who might be coming from traditional background may take his journey towards agility. PMI ACP, the PMI's Agile uh, uh, Certification Program is quite old now. It's like more or less more than six years old. And people have been wondering that we, how can we prepare for PMI ACP exam without having a PIMBO kind of reference. So PMI do have published role and responsibility and tools and techniques and various other aspects which are relevant for PMI ACP exam. But this is their first attempt to talk about the content related to Agile. The current practice guide does not cover all the contents which need to be prepared for PMI ACP exam, but it gives a good starting point. And they call it that it's a first attempt, it's a beginning, beginning towards writing something on, on Agile. So let me take you through the sections of this PMI's Agile practice guide and get you some idea about it. So it has a seven section and first section is just an introduction session section which primarily just introduces the practice guide to you. It talks about how it got created and what are the background story behind this particular practice guide. Then the interesting section starts which is called introduction to agile and this section primarily get into the detail of why we need to apply adaptive life cycle in some of the places how adaptive life cycle or agile based approach are different from incremental or iterative approach. <clears throat> the agile approach is a combination of incremental and iterative approach. So it also talks about various aspects related to agile mindset. It talks about agile values, principles and practices and this is that the theme behind those, those things create a, an adaptive mindset which is open for for new challenges, open to experiment fast and learn faster too in order to improve things further. It also talks about in which context the adaptive life cycle would be more suitable. It talks about areas like risks, uncertainties, requirement uncertainties, tool uncertainties which makes agile life cycle uh, <clears throat> relevant. It does touch upon lean and Kanban methods. It also looks at how the overall lean approach influencing the Agile as well as the Kanban method. So it's a good uh, introduction of Agile and related uh, uh, areas. Then we have second topic and this topic I would believe is the most interesting topic for project managers. Project managers who are might be coming from traditional background, they, they need to, they struggle in selecting life cycles. <clears throat> we understand that each project may require different way of organizing the development life cycle. There are projects which, which are going through high uncertainty in requirement and technology may require an adaptive approach. There are projects where you are very clear about what is requirement and the tools and techniques and, and, and the approaches are also well established. You may need to go to predictive life cycle. So this particular uh, section covers predictive, iterative, incremental, agile, doing the, the suitability assessment and it gives a good amount of, of focus on hybrid life cycles which is an interesting part. Uh, I, I don't see many agile books or agile methodologies talks about it very clearly. So it talks about that in a whole product life cycle, your development life cycle keeps changing. It keeps changing from predictive, uh, from adaptive to predictive or sometimes from predictive to adaptive. And it also talks about various scenarios where in a whole full development product, some part of the development of the product is, is using adaptive life cycle and the other part of the development of, of the same product might be using predictive life cycle. You might be working with vendors, you might be working with hardwares, firmwares and softwares. So hardware might be, be following some different life cycles than your software and, and embedded. So it gives a good perspective and I like this section primarily because this is something which is not covered much in, in many of the agile literature. So life cycle selection is, is something which, which I like the most in this particular uh, uh, practice guide. <clears throat> then we have something called implementing agile, creating an agile environment. Interesting topic primarily focuses on how the role of a project manager changes in agile environment. It 
puts good amount of pressure on servant leadership. It, it elaborates servant leadership at length and it also looks in the various aspects that how a project manager can be a servant leader and still remain relevant in agile context or still add value in the, in, in the agile context. So it talks about the servant leadership and project managers agile uh, role in an agile context and then it get into the other roles like teams, facilitation roles, structures and, and various team workspaces related issues so like cross-functional team, T-shaped professional, so those, those areas get covered uh, here. So I would say that uh, uh, the content which, which is coming here is, is, is quite popular in agile context where, we, where the leadership approach comes in. But the uniqueness in this content is the, the relevance for project manager. So that's the, the good part of, of section 4 which is implementing agile, creating an agile envir environment. Then implementing agile goes further and delivering an agile environment. <clears throat> so this is the, the uh, 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 section 5 of it. Uh, I don't like this section in this, this book, uh, frankly. Why? Because uh, it introduces lots of stuff, but difficult to understand those stuff just by reading this particular book. So my uh, uh, take on, on section 5 is, it is giving you a pointers or things to get started, but you can't just understand all these practices by just looking in, in this much content which is covered in section 5. Like it talks about retrospective, backlog preparation, backlog refinement, sprint reviews or demos and iteration based ag uh, agile. So they don't want to use the word sprint, they talk about demonstrations, reviews, execution practices and all and it gives every very small small paras related to all those things. So this practice get introduced well but you can't see the overall container like uh, scrum container or something container which, which can make people understand well. And I think that could be a purposeful also because most of the other agile content which we see in, see in the industry is primarily focusing on this area only. So if you pick up a scrum book, it primarily tells how scrum delivers an agile environment or how we implement agile using, using scrum. If you pick up Kanban method, it, it talks about it. If you pick up <coughs> Feature driven development, it talks about it. If DSDM, it talks about it. So it's a good pointers, but yeah, you need to argument this with some of your other, other learning. So that's my take, uh, that's my uh, view on section five. Section six, organizing uh, consideration for project agility. Now it has some, some interesting topics. It touch upon things like, how do we create an environment? How do we bring a change in a culture which supports agility? So that's a good introduction uh, is given, but the depth in this section is again very less. Considering the topic is big, so PMI also has their change management practice guide, so which, which might be another reference people can look into. Beyond that also change management is a relatively a bigger theory, so people need to look, look that area. In the same section, they talk about contracts and procurements also. They introduce various possible ways of, of working in agile contracts. Brief, brief, but yeah, it gives you good, 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 good pointers. Uh, uh, it also focuses on various scaling framework. I would say again, too brief. Like in a, in a one page, you come to know all the frameworks. And my fear is that if you don't know these frameworks already, you may get confused after reading it. So uh, uh, people who already have an understanding of, of agile and scaling approach like safe, disciplined agile delivery, large scale scrum and they have some brief idea about it, they may find it very easy and very uh, relevant uh, for this particular section. People who are very new to it may get a pointer from here and then they need to study somewhere else, the detail part of, of it. Now, another interesting point which this guide touches upon in this particular section 6 is project management office, PMOs. So they talk about how the PMO can work and how the PMO related stuff of, uh, may add uh, value in agile context. So agile PMO is, is, is a good topic. So the coverage is also good and it is something kind of a unique content uh, I would see not, not frequently available in various agile context. Then we have final section, call for action and incidentally this section gives you a link where you can share your feedbacks your suggestions related to this guide. So it's an agile guide and it is expected to get inspected and adapted frequently and it's just a beginning, it's not the final version of agile practice guide. So call for action gives you an invite to contribute, comment, raise questions related to this guide. So overall, 
<clears throat> I like the guide, primarily from a guidance for a project managers who, who primarily struggle between identifying which life cycle to apply where. Once they decide it's a good case for agile life cycle or adaptive life cycle or agile approach, then they need to do a little bit more study. And for that study, this guide is not sufficient. So it doesn't give you in-depth knowledge of agile, but it gives a traditional project manager very good context in which he can understand how agile helps in solving changing, uncertain, adaptive business problems. So for adaptive problems, we need to have adaptive solutions.